Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and I am excited to show you this project. It's uh, a lot of fun to play with. It was a lot of work getting it to work properly, but I'm making art out of random maps. I'm in P5JS. In this video, I'll start by showing you the art and some of the options and the code. It's really fun to see a piece of art and then say, where is that? And then go look for it. And then a little later on, I'll get into step-by-step -step how this is accomplished. You're actually going to learn two interesting skills in this video. One is how to import a satellite image into your canvas, and the second is how to change the colors in an image. Two skills that don't seem to go together, but they do in this case. So let's get started with this example. I've got, instead of a random map, I've specified this location so that I can show you step by step what's happening with the art. So first off, I'm pulling an image from Mapbox, then I'm going to distort it. So first I'm going to apply a filter that blurs it. So we'll do that. Then I'm going to apply a posterizing filter. Next I'm going to shift the colors. It's going to look at all the colors and change them to colors from a color table. So we'll change this to true. And now we have this, which already looks kind of like art. And if I click on the canvas, we'll get a different color table. And I can click on it again and it's picking from another palette on, in the color table. Next thing I do is I'm going to make tiles out of this. So we'll start with simple tiles. So what's happening is it's sampling the image and then basically rearranging the image into these tiles. And if I click on the canvas, we're going to get a new set of tiles and a new set of colors. Now I'm going to vary the size of the tiles. So now we've got different size tiles. Then I'm going to rotate some of the tiles. All right, we've got some rotation. And then I'm going to give it a little white space. So we we'll do 0.5. And now we've got some white space. And then I can click on the canvas again. And there we go. So these are the same map coordinates that I had before. But, you know, it looks completely different. Let's go back to random sampling. So right now I have it sampling randomly. It's either sampling from Mexico City or it's sampling from most of US and Canada. And at the bottom here, you can see that this sample is coming from the country and coming from this latitude and this longitude. So if I copy that and we'll go over to a map and we'll put those coordinates in and search. And so this is the location that it's brought up. Let's do another one. And now it's sampling from the city. So let's copy this so we can go see what that looks like. And it's sampling from here in Mexico City. I've also got options for zooming. So 18 is zoomed far in, whereas like five would be showing you the entire country. Let's make it less posterized. And I want to change the shift factor. Shift factor is if it finds two colors that are kind of close together, will it replace it with something from the color table? This shift factor is kind of hard to explain, so I'm going to show you another example. So here I'm importing this rainbow image, which is the hues from 0 to 360. And actually underneath here is another rainbow image, but I've used this color palette to replace the colors in here. And this is using a shift factor of 1. So it's taking this range of colors and turning it into this color. And this range of colors gets turned into that color. Now look what happens if I change this to shift factor 2. Now we've got the colored palette in here twice, once here and once here. And now the range of colors that this color is replacing is more narrow here, but it's also over here. So if I change this to, say, 10, now you see this green is here and here and here, etc. So now here's an image of me. I just got my drum set for Christmas. And I'm going to use a shift factor of 5 to replace the colors. So this is a shift factor of 5. If I change this to 1, you see broad swaths of color get replaced. Let's make this 2. You see a little bit more definition. If I make this 10, you get more definition. It also gets a bit noisy. When I was first doing my map art, I thought I needed to translate to HSB color mode. And I was getting good results, but they were different. So if I do this, now this is what I'm getting with a shift factor of 10. If I put that down to 5, I get something like this. So they're both interesting. I'm actually not quite sure what HSB is doing. 
Coming back to this example, if I switch to HSB mode, I get this, which is not very good. And it doesn't seem to change if I change this. I, I pretty much get the same thing. So I'm not sh quite sure what's going on here. But because I was getting two different results, I decided to make this a variable HSB mode equals false or true. So you could decide which one you want to use. So here I've got an image of a football field in Mexico. I've got this fixed to this location. I've got the color palette fixed. Distortion is false. Shift color is true and HSB mode is false. So this is not HSB mode and shift factor is five. Now let's see what happens if I change this to one. I get that. And if I change this to something like 40, I get something like that. Let's see if I do uh, maybe 15. Okay, so let's change HSB mode to true. Kind of the same for 15. Let's go to five. I get more definition. If I go to one, I get that. Here's shift factor of eight. So anyway, you get different results. They're both kind of interesting. I kind of like the HSB mode is true, even though I don't know why it's doing this. So here I've got a blur of one, posterize 18, and shift factor of 30. And so it's giving me kind of an interesting look. I can save a JPEG by pressing this button. Here's what happens if I basically am not distorting it, but I have the shift factor up at 20. Let's try another one. Let's posterize it. It kind of looks like paint that's been dropped on the canvas and swirled around. This one's interesting. Let's go see where that is. It's a bit hard to tell, but it might actually be this over here. Kind of looks like that. It can also be fun to turn the shift color off and just see the natural colors. That is sampling this area. And I've got this. Where is this? I think Bing is telling me this is in Kansas. Now this is interesting. Where is this? Canada, Ontario, Kenora. That looks like some kind of fungus. Let's zoom out some. Wow. Yeah, this whole area around James Bay in Canada is just fascinating to look at. It's all got these pock marks, like it's divots or something. I mean, look at this area. That is crazy. That's some of the fun of playing with this thing. You just get all sorts of weird stuff. Now, this is really dark. Let me see. That's Lake Superior. <laughs> Anyway, you get a lot of greens and grays, which is why I wanted to shift the colors. Huh, this is someplace in Colorado. Weird. Oh, and I should say, I am going to have this code available for download, but it's not going to work for you unless you get a key from Mapbox. Uh, so I'm going to explain how you get the key. But in order to get my key, I had to enter my credit card information. So I don't want you to have my key. It's pretty easy to get a key. It only takes a minute. So I'm about to get into specifics of how I accomplished this. And I know I'm going to lose some of you. If you thought this was cool, if you liked this video so far, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. The first step is we need our API key so that we can pull requests from Mapbox. You have to go to the Mapbox website and create an account and give them your credit card information. And then they're going to give you this key that you copy and you paste it into your code. I'll leave a link to Mapbox in the description. I'm also in the index, you'll see that I've got something called Mappa that I'm using. So you'll see on the P5 website that Mappa is one of the libraries. And if we go to mappa.js.org, they got some information here about how to use maps. So basically this is the library that allows you to easily integrate a map into your P5.js sketch. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Mappa also helps integrate Google Maps into P5.js. And for that, you also need to give Google Maps your credit card information, and there's a certain amount of free uh, downloads that you can do. So at first I was using Google Maps, and some of the images I'm showing you are probably from that. But when I read the terms of service, it wasn't really clear that I was allowed to modify the images. There was one spot where it said I could modify the images, and another spot where it said I couldn't. So I decided to look for a different map provider, and Mapbox is a lot more lenient. I didn't see anything preventing me from modifying the images and as long as I gave them credit, it seemed to be okay. Although if I decided to sell my art commercially, I'm not sure if it would be kosher or not. I'd have to look at it some more. Now to simplify things a little bit, I'm gonna show you a different code, one that just loads a map. 
And I'm going to share this code with you also, again, without the key, but if you put your key in, you'll be able to get a map. Now, I'm getting a static map, not a dynamic map. Usually when you're searching on Google and what I was looking at there, the Bing map, that's a dynamic map. You can zoom in and out and pan and, and see all sorts of points for businesses. Uh, but what I'm doing is just getting an image. So I've got my latitude and my longitude. Here I'm specifying a specific latitude and longitude, but usually I have this on random. The area that I'm sampling from is basically a square that goes from about here up to about here and then over this way and down this way. So this square right here. And I also sampled Mexico City just because it was a large city and there wasn't a bunch of water right next to it. So next I have some options here. When I call map box and say, hey, send me a map, uh, I need to specify the latitude and the longitude, how much zoom it's going to have, what type of map. I'm requesting a satellite map rather than a street map. I'm specifying a width and a height that is equal to the width and the height of my canvas. Then I have this stuff so that MAPA can do its magic. And then I'm loading the image and saving it into IMG. And after the image is loaded, then I display the image on my canvas. So if I hit start now, here is the image that it's downloaded for me. Now, even though I've given my credit card to Mapbox, they do allow me to download 50,000 images for free per month. But I don't want to give it out because then if we've got 200 people downloading 1,000 images, then I might be out some money. So back to the actual code. I've got the MAPA thing here. Then I also have a color table. This is preloading that color table. And you can see that here. It's a CSV file with red, green, blue. Uh, and I've got five colors in each palette. Each line is a palette with five colors. I'm creating my canvas. I'm creating the save button. I'm putting the save button in a particular position. If I ever click on the canvas, it's going to run the draw function, which creates new art. I have no loop here, so it's not actually looping through with the draw. So it's only going through draw if I click on the mouse on the canvas. Here I'm selecting a random color palette from the table. Here are the beginning and ending latitudes and longitudes for Mexico City, and the same thing for US and Canada. If I selected random for city and country, this is selecting whether it's city or country for me. I'm also printing to the console whether I've selected city or country. And then here I'm printing the latitude and longitude to the console. Now here are those options that I talked about before. Here's where I'm loading the image into IMG. And now we get into some of the fun stuff. Here is where I'm filtering the image. So I'm adding a blur of the certain amount that I specified in the variable up above. And I'm adding the filter posterize. I had added a dilate filter early in the project to brighten the image, but I uh, decided I didn't need that. Then the shift colors. Now there were a few options for shifting the colors. So here I'm showing you an earlier version of this and I was shifting colors basically at random and I was getting more garish colors than I would like. It wasn't bad, but sometimes the colors just didn't go together very well. And I was doing this by replacing the pixel array with new colors. Then I decided to try using a hue rotate filter. This is not part of the P5 library, but is in native JavaScript. One thing to be aware of though with hue rotate is that it affects the whole canvas. You can't just apply it to one image on the canvas. Whereas with these other filters, you can apply them to just specific images. I have to thank Death, D-E-T-H-E, on the P5 Discord, and NKing on the Generative Discord. Both of them helped me with providing this code because I could not figure out how to do the hue rotate on my own. But it still wasn't giving me the results that I had hoped for. So finally, I decided to shift the colors, and I'm doing it in kind of an unusual way. I am replacing the pixel array. So I'm getting the color of a pixel at a particular location, then I'm converting it to a hue, and then I'm looking at that hue, and if the hue falls in a certain range, then I'm replacing that hue with something from the color table. And this is where this shift factor comes in. Down here I'm taking 360 and divided by shift factor, and that becomes SF. And then I'm taking the hue that I've gotten and dividing it by SF. Now take a look at this spreadsheet. I've got 
360 divided by 9 gives me a SF of 40. This column is what's going to become color number 1, and this column is what's going to become color number 2. These are my hues, so 0 to 8. If I divide 8 by 40, I get this number. And if I divide hue 48 by 40, I get this number. And notice that all of these numbers have the same decimals. This is all between 0 and 0.2. So this color is hue 0 to 8. This color is hue 8 to 16. And notice that these decimals go from 0.2 to 0.4. And if we keep going over, you'll see all of these are 0.4 to 0.6. These are 0.6 to 0.8, and finally we get 0.8 to 1. So back to the code, I'm calculating what is the decimal when you take the hue divided by this SF number, and then I'm assigning the color based on that decimal. So here I'm assigning that col2 is going to be either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, and then I'm replacing the pixel in that location with the color number for that palette. And then I update my pixels. Now, if you don't understand a pixel array, I'll give you a link to Dan Schiffman's uh, video on pixel arrays. Then I get into all the tiling stuff. Now, I'm not going to go over all the tiling stuff again. I've already gone over the tiling stuff in previous videos. I'll leave a link in the description to the videos on how to do tiling, how to rotate the tiles, and my most recent video in making the tiles different sizes. And also that most recent video talked about using Perlin noise for white space. And I forgot to mention in that last video, an important part of making the tiles distinct is drawing a rectangle around the tiles. So finally, I'm displaying my final image and I'm adding the credits at the very bottom. Both Google and Mapbox require credit, so I've included that credit here at the bottom. And I've also included the latitude and longitude down here, so if you wanted to look this up later, from a JPEG, you could. So that's it. Pretty simple. <laughs> I don't know if you followed all that. My projects have been getting kind of more complicated. This is interesting. Let's uh, save a JPEG of that and go find out where that's from. Farmland in Missouri, or Missouri, as they would say. Now, of course, there are a lot more possibilities with this. Uh, this could just be like a background that you paint on top of. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is in the country. There must be some fields. Uh, there's a lot of things we could do to manipulate the pixels, of course. Or we could use this as a base and then add something else to it. I'm interested in other image sampling I might do to create art. I did look into using Google Street View, but that was even more restrictive when I looked at the terms, so I'm not going to do that. But Pexels... Pexels is a place where you can get free images, and they have an API, so I'm going to look into trying to figure out how I could do that. I don't know if I'll be able to pull just a completely random image, or if I'm going to have to actually send them a search term. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you like this video, you can give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Love to see your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.